Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to solve problem number 9 under the topic root locus. Before that, it will be better if you know the procedure of how to solve a problem using root locus. I will give the introduction video link. You can check it. Right. Here the problem is a system has this transfer function draw the root locus plot. Right. So the step one is we have to locate the poles and zeros. So from the transfer function you see how many poles are there? 1, 2, 3, 4. Right. We are having totally 4 poles. How many zeros? There are no S term in the numerator part. So there are no zeros. So let us proceed. So to locate the poles and zeros, what are all the values of poles? They are S, S plus 2, S plus 4 and S plus 8. Right. We have to equate each and every term to 0 and finally we are finding the value of poles as 0, minus 2, minus 4 and minus 8. Right. The next thing is to find the existence of root locus. So for this step we have to draw the we have to draw S plane and we have to mark the poles there. So here this is our typical S plane. Right. So this is our real axis and this is our imaginary axis. What are all the values of poles? They are 0, minus 2, minus 4 and minus 8. Right. So after marking the poles, we have to choose a test point. So here in this case, I am taking minus 2 as a test point. So to the right hand side of minus 2, what is the right hand side? This area is the right hand side. Right. So to the right hand side of minus 2, how many poles and zeros are there? We are having only one pole. 1 is an odd number. Therefore, root locus exists between this 0 and minus 2. Right. The next thing, for example, consider minus 3 here as a test point. So, to this test point, right. So, this is the right hand side, right. So, how many poles and zeros are there? We are having two poles. So, 2 is an even number. Therefore, root locus does not exist in this area. Similarly, again you can consider our test point as minus 4. Again to the right hand side of this minus 4, how many poles and zeros are there? Again we are having only 2 poles. So 2 is an even number. Therefore, the root locus does not exist here. Right. Then finally, again we are going to consider this minus 8 as test point. Right. So you can select test point in such a way that if you have the pole values, you can directly take that value as a test point. Okay, it will be more easy rather than randomly selecting the values. Right. And here now our test point is minus 8. So to the right hand side of this test point, how many poles and zeros are there? You see here we are having 3 poles. So 3 is an odd number. Therefore, root locus exists between this minus 4 and minus 8. Right. The next step is step 3. Finding the angle of asymptotes and centroid. So what is the formula for centroid? Sum of poles minus sum of zeros divided by n minus m. So what are all the different values of poles? The different values of poles are 0, minus 2, minus 4 and minus 8. Right. We have to sum those values. So 0, minus 2, minus 4, minus 8 and this minus sign here minus we are having no zero right so here the value is zero divided by n number of poles are four and number of zero is zero so four minus zero when you solve we are getting the value of centroid as minus 3.5 right the next step is finding angle of asymptotes it is given by the formula plus or minus 180 degree into 2 q plus 1 divided by n minus m. Right. So what is the value of n minus m? Here n is 4 and m is 0. Right. So n minus m is 4 here. Right. So first step we are substituting the value of q as 0. So when you substitute q as 0 the angle is plus or minus 45 degrees. When you substitute q equal to 1 the angle is found to be plus or minus 135 degrees and for q equal to 2 the angle is 225 degrees so 225 minus 360 gives minus of plus 135 degree and next step when the value of q is equal to 3 the value of angle is found to be 315 degrees so 315 minus 360 gives minus or plus 45 degrees right since 
you see when you look carefully the angle values are get repeated right here plus or minus 45 and here minus plus 45 Anyhow, the value of angle is same, only the sign gets changes. If you have the answers as repeated angles, you can stop. No need to continue further, right? And we are moving to our step 4 to find the breakaway and break-in points. So, the first step is we have to find the closed loop transfer function. So, closed loop transfer function is given by this formula. G of S divided by 1 plus G of S into H of S. Here g of s is the given problem, the value of h of s is 1 because here we are discussing only about unity feedback systems, right. So here just substitute the value in the place of g of s, just substitute the values. So after substituting, we have to take the LCM, right. Once LCM is taken, you see both the denominator terms are same, so they cancel each other. And finally, we are having an expression like this. Right. The next step is here we are just multiplying all the terms and finally we are ending up with the equation like this. So this is our closed loop transfer function. Right. So what is the characteristic equation? The denominator term of the closed loop transfer function is known as characteristic equation. So now we are considering the characteristic equation. So here we are framing an expression in terms of k. Right. So, we are keeping k on the left hand side and we are moving this entire term to the right hand side. So, you see here all terms are with plus sign. When they move on the right hand side, they will acquire a negative sign. So, here the minus sign is commonly taken outside. Right. The next step is we have to differentiate this dk by ds and we have to equate it to 0. Right. We have to differentiate this k expression with respect to s and we have to equate it to 0. So, this is the basic max term, right? That is, when you differentiate a to the power n, n, it is given by n into a to the power n minus 1, right? This is the basic formula. So, after differentiation, we are having an expression like this, right? Now, we are going to equate this term to 0. So, when you equate this term to 0, whenever this minus sign is moved that side, it gets eliminated. So, finally, we are having an equation like this. Right, we are having a cubic equation. So, how many value of roots we will be having? We will be having three roots, right. I will make a separate video of how to solve a cubic equation, right, or higher power equations. Just here I am simplifying, I am coming up with the answer. By solving, we are getting these three values as roots, right. So, after having these three values, we have to check what is the value of k. So, for this value, that is, we have to substitute this S value in K expression. What is our K expression? You see, this is our expression for K, right? We have to substitute the value of S and we have to check whether it is positive and real. So, for these two values, the value of K is positive and real. And for this last value, it is not positive and real, right? So, here we have to consider only these two points while drawing root locus. Right. Then the next thing is to find the crossing point on the imaginary axis. So again here we have to start with our characteristic equation. So this is our characteristic equation. Right. Here we have to substitute the value of S as J omega. Right. So just substitute. After substituting we have to simplify. We know that the value of J to the power 4 is plus 1 right and again j cube is it is minus j and the value of j square is minus 1 right just substitute the values accordingly and the next step is we are equating the imaginary part to 0 so here what are all the imaginary terms this term and this term are the imaginary terms right so we are equating it to 0 and finally we are simplifying and we are getting the value of omega as plus or minus 2.13 Right. And the next step is we have to equate the real terms to 0. So, when you equate the real term, you see here, these are all the real terms. Again, you have to go back to this expression and you have to take the real terms. Right. So, in that real terms, just substitute the value of omega square as this directly. Because we are having omega to the power 4 and omega square. So, just directly substitute the values. So, once we are substituting and finally we are finding out the value of k, it is found to be 235.08. That is the value of k is positive. 
as the value of k is positive this value of omega is the crossing point of root locus on the imaginary axis right so here we are finally writing a statement the crossing point on the imaginary axis is plus or minus j 2.13 right now we are going to draw the root locus the first step is we have to write the scale values right so here x axis stands for real axis and y axis stands for imaginary axis so first take the scale according to our values right so here i had taken the scale 1 cm as 0.5 units right so then the next step is we have to mark the poles so what are all the value values of poles they are 0 minus 2 minus 4 and minus 8 the poles are always marked by a cross marks right so 0 minus 2 and minus 4 and minus 8 right and the next step is we have to mark the centroid and angle of asymptotes so what is the value of centroid it is minus 3.5 so here is our minus 3.5 and the next step is we have to mark the angle of asymptotes so first it is plus or minus 45 degrees so you have to keep the protractor on this at the centroid and the first angle is plus or minus that is plus 45 degrees right so here you have to mark that respect to 45 degrees and the next angle is plus 135 degrees so just proceed further and mark this 135 degrees right and the next is minus 135 degree and minus 45 degree whenever you have minus sign you have to just reverse the protractor and you have to mark the angles so just now we had reversed the protractor and what is the angle it is minus 135 degree right so it is marked here and the next one is minus 45 degree so it is marked here right that's it now we are going to draw the angle of asymptotes so angle of asymptotes are drawn from centroid to that particular angle which we are measuring right just we can extend the line similarly we have to draw a line from this point to this and this to this and this to this right so these are only four values of four different values of angle of asymptotes so see here angle of asymptotes are drawn right and the next point is we are having two breakaway points so minus 0.785 so here it is and next one is minus 6.652 and here it is right these are only two breakaway points and the next one is crossing point it is 2.13 so here this is positive 2.13 and here it is negative 2.13 right now we are going to draw the root locus so the thing is how many poles are here you see here we are having four poles so totally how many branches will be there there will be four root locus branches then the next thing is a root locus branch will always start at a pole and end at zero right either we have finite zeros or zero may be present somewhere at infinity right so the thing is what is the purpose of drawing angle of asymptotes because it is an assumption that our root locus will always travel parallel to the angle of asymptotes right then they will meet the zero at infinity so here here there is a breakaway point as well as there is a crossing point on the imaginary axis so how to draw the root locus our root locus has to be drawn like this you see this is the crossing point right so it it has to be start here it has to go it has to cross the imaginary axis similarly downwards again it has to start at this breakaway point it has to go down and it has to cross this negative side right wait i will draw and show you see this is one part of our root locus right and the next thing is here we are having a breakaway point right and again the root locus which is to be drawn here is similar like this right you see here the root locus gets break away and, and it has to travel parallel to the angle of asymptotes right so it has to go like this and similarly downwards it has to go like this right i'll draw so this is our final root locus right so just we will now finish it off with how many root locus branches here where it starts and where it gets ended right so our first branch starts at origin okay at this pole 
it travels here and it gets break away at this point and it moves upwards it crosses the imaginary axis at this point and it goes like this and this is our branch number one right and the second branch starts at this pole it travels like this it gets break away and it moves downwards again it crosses the negative imaginary axis at this point and it goes like this right so this is our branch 2 and the next thing is again the third branch starts at this pole it travels here it gets break away and it goes like this so this is our branch number 3 and again the fourth branch starts at this pole it travels here it gets break away and it moves downwards and this is our branch number 4 right so that's all in the graph sheet you have to mark what is the centroid it is must okay you have to mark the centroid you have to write angle of asymptotes and that's it just you can mention the branches like this branch 1 2 3 and 4 right so here comes the end of this problem if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section thank you